Hello, hey everybody, welcome. Great to see everybody in the chat. Good to see you there. Hello to all the members in the channel as well. Thank you so much for being here. <clears throat> as we go along here, if you have questions, if you could put question in all caps and have your question follow, we will do our best to get to as many of those as we can. I'm Natalie and this is Scientology Life After a Cult, where in the mornings you're gonna catch me recapping the Scientology news that has the internet buzzing talking about my three generations of my family being in Scientology for 35 years and leaving. And you will also catch me doing my favorite things, which is collaborating with other people here on YouTube and doing interviews. And that is what we're doing today. So please hit that like button on your way in, hit that subscribe button as well. And when you do, be sure to hit that notification bell so you know that, because uh, you never know, you just never know where I'm going to be popping up. I mean, you know, in the morning, because we're pretty, we're pretty good about the schedule. But outside of that, that notif notification bell can help. Today, we are going to do a little bit of a deeper dive into a topic we touched on on the Scientology recap this morning. And I get to do it with Oh No Nora. So I'm going to bring her up to the main stage here. Welcome, Nora. Hey. Good hip, morning. Hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Oh, my goodness. I know. I'm taking it back. <laughs> there are so many things going on. I'm still reacting, honestly, to your earlier live this morning. Um, with that, I, I mean, I commented at the time. I just want to touch on it super briefly yeah, before we dive into it. this whole legal hula blue. But um, the fact that somebody inside a building there at PAC, yeah, had the bravery to put help in tape because clearly they've taped paper up all over the window so that you cannot see into it. Right. They don't want you to see anybody at any time. Um, and the fact that they were like, this is my chance to get a message to the neighbors. Like that astounds me because you guys like where that building is in relationship to everything else that I believe is the mill. If I'm not, if my memory isn't faulting me, yeah. um, because the mill was on an elevated floor. And I remember we could see out is like the back side of the mill where they used to do a lot of staining um, of wood and stuff like that, because the RPF mainly manned the mill when I was uh, on there in, yeah. in between uh, 2000 and 2002. And um, that is insane to me. I mean, it, insane in like, here's somebody crying literally for help and people see it. It gets reported yeah. obviously. And what, what you guys don't understand is that like the, the fact that somebody called the police, right? A, a neighbor, somebody else called the police and was like, there's a help sign in this window. Y'all got to come check this out. The first thing that happened and why it was being scraped off before the police got there is that you have to understand that a, the LAPD is not only tight with them and stuff like that. They may have received a call, but what's more than likely is they are listening on the police scanners for anything that has to do with the base itself or surrounding Scientology bases in security. Yeah. So the second they got a call with the address across the street from them saying, Hey, I see this from my window. You guys better come check it out. Security rushed over to the mill and, hauled everybody who's working in there, RPF, non-RPF, put all those guys into interrogation rooms and then furiously get somebody to start scraping it off yeah. so that the whole thing is going to get erased. But I can tell you right now, whoever they find that is responsible for that is going to be under 24 hour watch is going to be heavily interrogated. It is a security threat that they did that to all mankind. Yeah. This is why it cannot be a joke no. because the LAPD are going to come and do nothing as per usual. And that's why I said in your chat, when I chatted it, it's like people always have asked me throughout the years, like you ran away so many times. Why didn't you just go to the police? That is why, yeah. because they would have listened to my story and then been like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Meanwhile, somebody else is on the phone to security to let them know I'm there. And either Scientology would have come to pick me up or the police would have just driven me back yeah. because they are not there to protect Sea Org members, Scientologists, or anyone else who has a complaint against Scientology. And it is so, it's so unbelievably grotesque that this happened. 
And whoever that person is inside that building, I hope you get out. I hope you find a lawyer and tell them this story. It's documented on the internet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And sue the bejesus out of everybody, including the LAPD, because it is so disgusting that you are literally telling the world I'm trapped in here. And everybody's like, well, let the building burn. It's just Scientology. They got it. Makes you wonder too, with the earlier times on L. Ron Hubbard way early on where, where there, there were those false fire calls and different calls. And a couple of them were really suspicious. Like, well, mm -hmm. like it was coming from inside of the building because not all oh, of these yeah. calls are actually Scientology. It was, no. it, it, it's just, that's what I found most disturbing too, is understanding what that means. Like what you would have like the confront and the bravery it takes to go right help on the window when you're being held there is, is just huge because they knew that if they got caught, they'd be in even more trouble. And what Scientology yes. is going to have to take a look at is, okay, what, and, and it all depends on the person and who it is, mm -hmm. what their connections are on whether or not they find yeah. it easier to just let them go or not let that person be running around. Because for example, let's use you, your story a little bit of, as, as an, as someone, Nora, who kind of, you know, knew a lot of the behind the scenes thing that Scientology didn't want let out. What was that experience? I mean, what would you say? Like, what? Oh, what they did didn't want to let me go at all because I knew too much shit. I still know too much shit. They don't want me doing this 100%. That's why they keep trying to wage a psychological war on me because A, they know I have had su suicidal ideations in the past. They yeah. know my history. They know all of our histories. They know your confessions. It's all written down. Uh, they know all of these things. So they weaponize that against you because that's how I left. I, yeah. I, I ran several times. I went through a formal fitness board, okay, where they approved it. They were like, okay, go. And then Get the RPF, I see, hung on to it for three months while I was on the RPF's RPF, guys. There is a lower level. <laughs> and um, he waited for me to break under daily pressure to be like, okay, I'll just stay. And when I said that, like just in the most app, I was not enthusiastically staying. I was like, well, I guess I'm never getting out. So I'll just stay. He pulled out my approved fitness board from his bottom drawer. He'd been hanging onto it. He's like, tossed it at me. He's like, I knew you'd change your mind. Wow. So I, I was approved to leave in the most legal, hardest way to get, you know, to go through an approved fitness board. And he said, nope. So that that is the evils. That is the evils of Scientology, because if they find that you are valuable to them in any way, shape or form, they will keep you. Now, let's go conversely. Let's yeah. say that help had been put up by Jessica Feshback. OK, uh, Jessica Feshback comes from a very wealthy Scientology family who has given bajillions of dollars to Scientology. Yeah. She at one time was posted as uh, Katie Holmes's friend. That was her job. That's right? right. She was Katie Holmes' personal spy for Scientology. Right. She was just, yeah, her friend who would answer questions for Katie in interviews. Okay. Yeah. Now, if that was Jessica Feshback that had been found to put that help up, totally different story. They would have given her some mild interrogations sprinkled with a lot of NDAs and then be <laughs> like, let's get you out of here very quietly because her family is very connected. And if they aren't getting that money from the feshbacks, you know, the lights aren't staying on. So, yeah. you know, like as an example, I got gifted for Christmas, a pair of blue jeans by my mother. I was interrogated for hours as to why I was spreading black PR to my mother that my org wasn't supplying me with clothes during my RPF stay. Jessica feshback got a Lexus, no <laughs> interrogation. While she was on, while she was in the Sea Org, while well, she was in the Sea Org, and a a thousand dollar gift card to Nordstrom's. Wow! No interrogation. Nobody says anything. Nobody says anything. So it's two. Even when you're in the Sea Org, it's two different worlds. Depending on who your family is, who yeah. you're married to, da 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 da. Okay, yeah. my family was dirt because they were ex Guardians office, so I was always suspicious from the jump. 
you know, and it's just like, it's a whole thing. So, you know, they don't like who they don't like and they love who they love. So yeah. whoever wrote that help, um, my guess is, is either on the RPF because that's usually where they have them working in the mill or, um, in some other forced labor situation because they don't call it the RPF anymore. Yeah. Um, and, or is a very low level of the pack base because again, the mill is considered like in estates. Yeah. So this is somebody who's working round the clock nonstop to build stuff to, you know, a lot of pressure. And um, yeah, I, I really, I, I, I pray for their safety because it's going to be bad for them. And, um, yeah, it's, I, I really hope that they just get off that base somehow. I agree. And, and keeping the pressure on them, keeping people looking and, you know, sharing what they see. Oh, a hundred percent. I'd love, I'd love to talk to the neighbor that saw that, you know, just continue yes. to put pressure because putting pressure on exposing Scientology has created a degree of change in the past, even if they just stop it for a little while, like the mm -hmm. coerced abortion issue. When the Tampa Bay Time series came out about that, they slowed their roll on it for a while and they slipped back into their old habits, but at least it buys some time of, for some other people where it's not as, as horrific as maybe it once was. I think they've had to change their tactic on that too, especially after, you know, Laura DiCrescenzo basically won her case. They settled with her for an undisclosed, very large sum. And I say, good for you, my friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, um, yeah, it wasn't just one that happened to her. It was multiple um, forced abortions. And I know because of her case and because of the amount of people like us out here who knew about her case, um, it's not going anywhere. And I only mention it every once in a while because I want to remind Scientology, more people will do that. Yeah. More people are coming for you. You're yeah. going to have to give up the cheddar or, you know, really stop it. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's, it's nuts. It's nuts yeah. that, you know, and they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to remember Laura DiCrescenzo who started working for them at like 10 Mm -hmm. You know, she was a, like, I believe nine or 10 when she started working in the Sea Org. Yeah. You know, so it's just, um, yeah, yep. all this stuff is nuts. But this, uh, we'll, we'll circle into the lawyer thing, which is what we're actually supposed to be talking about. That's this, right. I cannot. This Jane Doe case. Not your take on this. <clears throat> that went from what should have been cut and dried. Let's be honest. I yeah. mean, it's, it's human trafficking, plain and simple um, for this person. And uh, I believe there's other litigants in, in the cases, in the original case. I can't remember, but I, I thought there was like at least three people in the original case. But, you know, my, my outside take on the whole thing is that this lawyer, you know, when you're a lawyer, you have a code of ethics in the same way that like a nurse has to do the, uh, you know, the Florence Nightingale oath and a doctor does the Hippocratic oath. Lawyers have a similar moral, uh, you know, boundary, right? Especially between, with their clients. <laughs> between them and their clients. Yes. I mean, look what just happened in Georgia in the, in the Trump case where the two lawyers were banging and it almost threw the whole case out the window because two lawyers were banging. And so the judge finally ruled like that the assistant lawyer, the dude who wasn't the head had to like leave the case and then the case could move forward. Yeah. You know, because of all this, I mean, it was just like, that's, that's how electric the subject of sex and infidelity and just banging can, can throw a whole legal case into the basket. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, and then sprinkle in the fact that he's on the same board as Mike Rinder. Yeah, let's that he's let's, supposed to be championing, you know, sex victims. Exactly. Ugh. Yet, yet what it, it's what messy. Is he doing? It is super messy. Let's share a little bit about what it was, just in case anyone did not see the whole video yeah. that was on down the rabbit hole news and rabbit shared and broke news of a complaint where a Jane Doe has come forward. In fact, she leaked the complaint where she was on the Scientology aftermath on the show. 
and was referred to a lawyer by the name of Brian Kent, who is a board member on Child USA with Mike Rinder. Let's pull up. No one's is running. Let's let's take a little Why look. <laughs> yeah, look what's going on. We were just talking about allergies earlier. We're like let's, the Phoenix twins today, guys. Sorry. That's right. Let's look at let's look first at who Brian is, and then we'll kind of jump into a little bit from Rabbit. And this is Brian Kent, who is in the he is the the subject of the complaint. He is a former sex crimes prosecutor, a clergy abuse survivor, and a recipient of the National Center for Sexual Exploitation's 2019 Civilian Leadership Award. Then it goes on to talk about, and we don't need to read the whole thing, but I find it interesting too that he was given that award in 2019. That's when these things were going down. Like that's when it was going down. Yeah. And in a nutshell. And that's when Mike and Leah got their award too. Oh, why is it? Mike and Leah were gifted. It says, and if you go to back to that and go down to Mike's bio, yeah, it says that both he and Leah. Oh no, I'm sorry, that's on his wiki page. I can pull that up. Oh, okay. Um, because I I pulled up his wiki page the other day to find out when he um got gifted, got you know, was on to the board. Yeah. So in 2019, let me just I'll I'll share these this screen here real quick. Is this when uh? Kent was on to the board or when Mike Rinder yes. was on the board? So this is from Mike Rinder's Wikipedia page. This is okay. the awards and charitable work section, right? So Mike Rinder, co-executive producer, blah, 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 blah. Um, and you got the, he won the Emmy in 2020. We know that, 18. In 2018, he co-founded the Aftermath. No, he did not. He was invited onto it by Aaron. Thank you very much. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so 2019, Child USA awarded Mike Rinder and Leah Remini the Barbara Blaine Trailblazer Award for having, quote, taken brave public stand for justice and given voice to many Scientology's victims, right? And so then it says, as of 2023, Rinder sits on the board of Child USA, where he helps to change the laws in numerous states across the U.S. with legislation enacted to make it possible for victims to pursue their day in court. Huh. I'm sorry. What? What I, I, what I would love to know is what Mike Rinder, everyone else is a lawyer. Okay. They're writing law things. Yeah. Mike has no education, guys. None. And somehow, well, actually, I take that back. He did graduate the Australian equivalent of high school and then joined the Sea Org, right? So he finished that, but he has he has no degrees. He's not a, a, a nothing. So how is he? He's just sitting there in the room being like, yes, uh, this is perfect. We should do that. But also for somebody who used to do these abuses to be the person to craft the laws, like what? Yeah. Do you what? think... So the complaint says that I think it was in 2019, and this was what Rabbit touches on, that she, the Jane Doe traveled to Los Angeles to do the, the Scientology Aftermath show. Mm -hmm. And she, along with other people who shared their story on the show, were referred to him, the attorney, by, by Mike Rinder, Boom. right? Yeah. To represent them in a case against Scientology, and there were multiple of them, but in this specific complaint, this attorney who's on the board of Child USA ended up having a completely in in inappropriate, manipulative sexual relationship. That's so kind that. of you to put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> like how do you even it's not well, guys, well it's according not to the complaint that rabbit read right yeah. it, it started off with your typical grooming bs yes love bombing then sharing mutual uh problems he revealed he's also a victim of child sexual abuse as a child that's Which horrific trust. right build building that trust bubble building yeah. that trust bubble then they've been messaging each other where on WhatsApp. That's totally how lawyers communicate with their clients. Let's just WhatsApp each other. That's not sus. Then tells her before their first official in-person meeting, please delete our WhatsApp. Yeah, and delete the whole like, thing. She's like, what? I say what? No, no, no. I'm, I'm going to keep that. And then 
he starts complaining of of pains in his body. He's like, oh, this, I'm stressed. I don't know if I should be married. My body hurts. Oh, ding, ding, ding. Does he know that his client's a licensed masseuse? Of course he, yes, does. he does. So he's like, so this person being a, a generous person is like, oh, well, I could, I, that's my job. That's crazy. I could help you. Look at me. You're helping me. I can help you. Scientologists and ex-Scientologists, you guys, you want to con an ex-Scientologist, convince them they're helping people. Convince them that they, you are in need, that this group that you're going to get them to join needs them. They are important. Their help is vital. Sci Ex-Scientologists are like zombies to that shit. We're going to like, oh, <laughs> I can help. Like, it's just, I'm telling you. So he, you know, Psychology 101 pulls this Jane Doe in and then, you know, oh, hey, you want to, I want to cash in on that massage in my hotel room. Yeah. While you're in town. While you're, you know, I flew you in. And then when, when the case starts heating up, when actual actionable stuff is going to happen, the DOJ wanted to interview them. And of course she's smart. She wanted to have her lawyer there. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, I can't. Oh man. I'm, Oh, I got a foot cramp. Can't be at that in meeting. I don't know. My eyelashes with hurt. The, with the DOJ, what lawyer who is representing? No lawyer's going to refuse that. You. Exactly. That's really so, suspicious. Even if they had been banging for uh, 10 years at that point, he a, a lawyer doing his job would have been like, let me get my good suit. Yeah. I mean, like, give me a break. Because this just shows that this person, Mr. Kent Esquire, mm -hmm. had no purpose in taking this case, except for he saw a picture of Jane Doe and was like, I like. Yeah. I mean, like, give me a break. Why is he even doing it? Does he actually care about what happened to her and the other litigants? Absolutely not. How we don't he? know. We don't know how many yet, right, Nora? How many litigants, no. how many other victims of Scientology that he was representing? Yeah. So I just I feel like, you know, in my diabolical mind. Because I'm gonna, I want to I want to share this other thing real quick. Um, so in, in the same wiki page, and I and I put this in a, a thing earlier. So um, it, this is again on his uh, Wikipedia page. Let me just share it real quick. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of back and forth, and you know, Mike likes to say he doesn't know a lot of stuff. So this is from his Office of Special Affairs. This is his official wiki that he's approved of because people keep editing that part of him co-founding the Aftermath Foundation out and it keeps getting put back in. So um, as executive director of the Office of Special Affairs, he has served as the chief spokesperson and representative of Scientology to the media for 25 years until replaced by Tommy Davis in 2005 under orders from David Miscavige. This office is responsible for overseeing public relations and legal issues for the church, as well as handling internal investigations into members' behavior. According to a 2016 Rolling Stone recap of the second episode of uh, Leah's show, Rinder said of his position, if the church decided someone was an enemy and needed to be silenced or destroyed, it was my job and I did it. Everything from following them 24 hours a day to having people camped outside their door to being vilified on the internet to following them wherever they traveled. I was the guy that did it. Wow. So, and then he's, and then he always likes to bring up the John Sweeney thing. So he cited a specific example, which is very public. We all have video of it. It's on the internet where he's in John Sweeney's face and intimidating him until John Sweeney breaks and has the shouting match with yeah. Tommy Davis, the famous, you know, uh, shouting match with Tommy uh, Davis. So the, the thing about that is, is that um, you cannot continue to deny what you were programmed to do for 25 years and look at what's happening today. Look what happened with the Aftermath Foundation itself. Look what happened to Miriam. And now we see back in 2019, before all of this, the same shenanigans are happening because who knows all of our dirty secrets? Who has all of the, the, the memory noodle up here because we were trained to memorize things, guys, forever? Mike Rinder. 
So if this were like something that maybe Jane Doe would have been vulnerable to, he would know. And then he would look at this guy and go like, bingo, this is gonna go great. Because how do we destroy this very important case? You derail it with some shenanigans. So and do you, are you saying then, do you think, is it your, is it your opinion? Is it what, you, what you're saying here is that, do you think that Mike allegedly, Rinder, we'll just allegedly intentionally connected Jane, the Jane Doe in this case, in this complaint with mm -hmm. the lawyer, Brian Kent, mm -hmm. who was on the board with Child USA with Mike Rinder mm -hmm. with the intention to derail the lawsuit? A hundred percent. Because the other thing that we know about Mike Rinder is because of the spy training and everything else that we all were like a little bit as Sea Org members trained to do. Okay. There's a, uh, there's a, an entire call course called welcome to the Sea Org. Okay. That you do that teaches you basic spy techniques, guys. We are taught to do memorization. We are taught to project our voice across long distances without like raising our uh, diaphragm volume and things like that. We are taught these things because Sea Org members are supposed to be alert to all, uh, you know, instances of defection, instances of uh, people coming in to cause problems. We are like, we are just our own little reporting machine and we, we learn this stuff. Now, Mike got trained even more in these techniques and was enacting, uh, you know, the spy missions and things like that. Yeah. So I don't think his brain has ever turned off. That's my supposition. It's my opinion. And to look at, like, look what he said to Miriam. Okay. Just as evidence. When he interviewed her back in 27, uh, 2017, he said to her, you have to come do this show because your case could be the one that could break Scientology. Yeah. And then what did he proceed to do? Withhold information, pretend to help her, just like weave things along enough until it's like, oh, nope, no more soup for you because who could it burn? Who Who's that pot going to burn? Mike Rinder. Do you Same think thing that's this his situation. motivation? Because I, I think my first question yeah. then would be. It's self-preservation, but also, I don't, you know, the things to me, if, if I look at it from the complete worst case scenario, Nat, Complete worst case scenario is he's an op the whole time is that mm. he was released from Scientology, total Manchurian candidate type scenario. And he's just out here becoming a leader and then crafting the narrative very carefully so that it never actually can be actionable to take it down. Mm -hmm. And that would be, I mean, like, let's be honest, who else could be trained enough? Who else would be powerful enough? Who else would be in a position where other people would be like Scientolo ex Scientologists would be drawn like moths to a flame to a very powerful ex Scientologist who's like, now I've got the deets. Now I'm going to tell the stuff. Now I'm going to save everybody because I know the stuff in here. It's do perfect. You do you think that, so given that this, you know, when this was happening, when this was going on, you were no longer working with the Scientology Aftermath on the show anymore, but you had been working with them prior. This starts yeah. happening after that. Mm -hmm. And the complaint was leaked last fall, but it was mm -hmm. actually made a year prior. I'm shocked that it's not been talked about out. I mean, the first I heard about it was on, on rabbit show. Yeah. What do you think will happen in terms of, let's talk about Brian Kent for a minute, who is the lawyer on child USA, who's the alleged perpetrator who yeah. was referred all these Scientology cases to have a case against Scientology. And he's, I, I mean, it, it puts everything at risk just completely yeah. What what ends up happening to him, do you think? I mean, they put a formal complaint in to the board to the bar um in Pennsylvania. And I think that right now bar associations um are not taking kindly to uh sexual innuendo because it makes lawyers look bad across the board, right? It makes them it makes the the profession of lawyer. I mean, there's always jokes about lawyers anyway, but it makes the profession of lawyer seem less, uh, less professional. Important. You know, I mean, you know really what I mean? Like it just, anything. just yeah. brings it down. Totally. Into the 
So I think he's going to face some serious um, repercussions, if not disbarment. Yeah. Um, which yeah. is like worst case scenario for a lawyer. That means you cannot practice law anymore. You, I'm curious it. to see if he actually, if he is asked to step down from the board of child USA, cause I don't see he's how still he on their website. Him. Yes. But he's still on the website <laughs> or does he make that choice on his own? And then how does mm -hmm. that affect the relationship then with Mike Rinder is still on the board for child USA. And then of course with the aftermath foundation, because it it just each time it's like we just like get beyond like, OK, all right, like we good. We don't have to all agree. Right. But can we just kind of like, you know, keep at it and we have an agreement. We can a disagreement. Yeah. We can talk about it. Bring it up. There's nothing that we can't talk about anymore. We get to talk about what we want. Yeah. But that I mean, that, I saw how, an interesting question that, in the chat right now yeah. that is relevant to this. Somebody asked, um, are we are we concerned that these revelations will hurt Leah's case? Now, for me, I look at Leah as a, a complete individual and not this weird Leah and Mike situation, which is the narrative that Mike tries to craft. Leah is married to her husband, Angelo. She has a kid. That's Leah's life. She's an actress. She has made a name for herself um, despite being a Scientologist, guys, uh, yeah. at the time when she was coming up and, you know, has continued her career since leaving and has done uh you know a huge thing when she started her show and things like that and wrote her book and everything else right yeah. so that's that's the way i view leah now of course the rest of the world is put leah and mike as this like you know on-screen couple uh because mike continues to drop her name every time he can to get this like celebrity shield of ethics protection for himself. Yeah. And so the more that is revealed about Mike Rinder, it's worse for him because part of his income comes from testifying at places and getting speaking engagements and getting asked to go on boards and getting to do these things. And, um, you know, the, pro the real problem is, is that he's never taken full accountability for himself. He's never come clean all the way. And, um, that's coming now to bite him in the booty. That's, that's what's happening. It's biting him in the absolute ass. And I sincerely hope that a judge worth their salt is going to be like, this guy can't sit with us, whatever. We're going to move forward with your case because your case, Leah, is, is this, it's not yeah. with this gentleman here. Who's not a named litigant, um, so I really hope that that is what happens for her and for anybody else who has had Mike Rinder testify as an expert witness. Now, regardless, and this is going to be a shocking statement, everybody, regardless of his personal shenanigans, okay, he is still an expert in Scientology and the dirty deeds. And his testimony in that regard, I think, is valuable. I think it's important because in a court of law, he is the only person who can say, yeah, I, this happened on this day at this time at this place with these people because he knows that, right? Um, it, it's the same way I feel about Claire, right? Claire knows a lot about those things and I, I want her to keep doing that stuff, right? Um, <clears throat> you know, because she was number three. Uh, yeah. So, you know... I, it's it's it, both things can be true at once. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like I he can completely. be somebody who's who's out here doing weird crafting shit to keep himself safe, probably. Um, but then at the same time, he's the guy that we got to ask these questions to. Should he be on a board helping ex Scientologists escape? Absolutely not, because people are terrified of him. Should he be yeah. on a board helping his child sex victims? No, I don't think so. That's not where he belongs. Does he belong? telling the truth about Scientology because he knows that? Yes. 100%. Yes. Uh, what's the question here? Do you That's think Mike Rinder knew yeah. what a creeper this lawyer was when you referred him to... I think we just talked about that. I think so. Oops. Brought you down. threw me away I now. moved the wrong thing. <laughs> 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 yeah, and I and I and so I I'm tracking with that. You think that mm -hmm. he knew at the time. Mm -hmm. I would say mm -hmm. if I'm giving my opinion and my speculation, I would lean towards, but it's also kind of more me where I'm like, oh, I don't know. Maybe you didn't know. 
<laughs> so I kind of lean on the like, I, I, I love your Pollyanna attitude. <laughs> I love it. We all need that. We all need the, you know, it's, it's so like, you know, it's the island. It's the island. Yeah, exactly. this. It's like, like if, everybody if come. Ohana, I love that's you. Right. That's right. You know, and that's good. I mean, I'm trying to get that back because it's hard to just be cynical and angry about stuff all the time. That's yeah. not good for your body. Yeah. But I do good. get the self-preservation part. Mm -hmm. I do see how crafting a narrative and only and kind of gatekeeping to a degree could be yeah. a form of self-preservation because of the, you know, just the legality of everything and, and what Mike Rinder was involved in during his time in the C organization. Yeah. And it, it blows my mind though. My mind continues to be blown over and over again, ever since I got on YouTube about how, how did you not think this was going to come out just thing after thing after thing. And at one point I just think, well, maybe it's an over, does, does Mike Rinder have such a high tolerance of that world of dishonesty and all moving these pieces around that that behavior isn't seen as being odd. Kind of like the way that um, Aaron and I were talking once about how we didn't consider being followed to be being fair game by Scientology because it wasn't that big a deal. <laughs> because our tolerance of shenanigans from Scientology is so much stronger that we weren't seeing it and recognizing it. Like I had to have somebody tell me, you just need to know that that is not normal <laughs> to be followed by private investigators. That is not normal. And yeah. that is being fair game by Scientology. Yeah. But we so don't care that it's like, now nah, whatever. That could Mike then be that kind of like his level of tolerance of dishonesty and shenanigans is just so high that he doesn't see this as being a problem? Yeah, I would just say, Yes, because like, you know, um, it, it, I mean, he did these things for so long. He expects it, you know, and it's like the norm for him is even like a, a, a higher, uh, you know, um, amount than even like our weird normal amount of shenanigans, yeah. you know, and like weird stuff and like uncomfortable situations that we would put ourselves into. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's just like as as former Sea Org members, there are certain things that I, you know, uh, have learned through years to not put up with. But the other thing is, it's like I've done therapy. I'm in massive amounts of therapy right now. I'm like in serious intensive therapy right now. And because of that, I'm learning a lot of things and I'm discovering a lot of things. Guess how much therapy Mike renders that, guys? 0.00000%. So you're taking somebody who escapade from, uh, you know, Scientology at the highest, one of the highest levels, one of the most influential levels, having committed himself in innumerable crimes. Okay. Yeah. And that was his modus operandi. That was his survival for all those years to keep criming. Okay. And then he comes out into the real world and it's not really doing well. And then when he starts doing well, he's helping people that he crimed to talk about their crimes that were committed on them. But very carefully, very carefully, let's just make sure that the story is yeah. told just so. So we keep the focus on Scientology and that's fine. But, uh, you know, like this room that I'm in can't commit a crime, right? An organization cannot commit a crime. The people inside the organization commit the crimes on behalf of the organization, on behalf of the leadership, yeah. right? So, but he, but the way he talks about it is, well, Scientology did this. And every once in a while, I'll be like, well, David Miscavige, he wants to point the finger at David Miscavige a lot. Um, David Miscavige didn't go around personally following people, uh, convincing them they were cuckoo kachu, uh, getting them to lose their jobs, all this other kind of stuff, right? Destroying them on the internet, his own yeah. quote himself. Dave Miscavige was just like, I don't like, you know, he's just Napoleon at the top going, I don't like 
you know, <laughs> the thumbs down. And then people go and do things to appease him. Are you happy now, my lord? We have destroyed them. And now you can be happy in your throne, in your gilded cage. Oh, yay. Please have some Botox. Please get your hair coiffed. Like, yeah. that's it. Like, Davis Gavage isn't going around doing jack shit except for staring at people. And if he stares at you the wrong way, you fucking, you're going to go to RPF. You're, you're going to be in trouble. Out. Heather makes yeah. a good point. She says, we need to stop putting organizations on a pedestal. Some of these organi mm -hmm. or organizations are as corrupt as what they are supposedly mm -hmm. fighting against. Thank yes. you for the super chat, Heather. And that Andy is very P. true. That is very true. Here's a super chat yeah. for uh for you from Trailblazer. Oh, Long. thank you. Look the cult of Mike Rinderology is real. 100% with you, Nora. Now use that same analogy to decipher what happened to Aaron in LA. Yeah. The the fact that they arrested him in two seconds after talking to his assailant on the street for an hour and then allowed him to remove everything from his person, including weapons, yeah. and then finally put him in a squad car after Aaron was told without any hesitation that if you press charges, you're also going to jail. And Aaron's like, all yeah. right, yeah, try me. <laughs> they don't know Aaron. Like Aaron's like, okay, said, that's adorable. I've got the rest of the were, day. He didn't think they were going to do it, but they did. <laughs> oh no, he. I think he knew. I think. Well, I. I think there was a part of him that was like, they're not going to do this, and then the other yeah. half was like, oh, uh oh, hot dog. But you know, he did it. He's, and you know, again, I mean, Aaron ultimately would have been pretty safe. He's a very big white guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the threat of him in jail like on the lowish bar, still terrifying, still a traumatic experience, not lessening that in any way, shape or form. But like the difference between me going to jail and Aaron going to jail, you know, a uh, uh, large difference, large difference, you know, uh, for that. But yeah, I mean, it's just, they keep doing that stuff. Yeah. Do you think uh, Ingrid has a question, but isn't Mike Rinder a witness for Leah's lawsuit? Do you know? Yes. I, I believe, I believe he's an expert witness in it. But I, again, I'm not, I, I haven't read the whole thing on there. Uh, Teresa is asking, did Mike Rinder refer these ex-Scientologists knowing that he would, that he would never push these cases to court? So, and we, and we touched That's on That's a good that. question. <laughs> Yeah. And, and your, your feeling was that, yes, that that's what he was doing. Whereas, but then for me, I, I need to see more evidence of that. Yeah. To think that for sure, because I could see, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't know enough about the stories to know if it might tie back to Mike Rinder, where it, if it actually made it to court, he would be in trouble. But it just, at some point, my question I would be, what was his original court. like touch on the incidents that are being talked about in this case? Yes by Jane Doe. Was he the one taking out the trash for Scientology and everybody else at that time? That's the real question. I'm betting the answer is yes. That yeah. he knows a lot. Like, do you see what I'm saying? He's playing 3D chess right now. Yeah. Okay. And the chess board gets moved around. Now, why was Laura D. Crescenzo's case successful? Was he an expert witness? I don't think so. I don't, I don't believe so. Um, and, and they had all of, that was Moxon doing that case for Scientology. They were bringing out their big guns. They were bringing out the, the true blue mofos to yeah. take her down. And they couldn't. She stood around. She's the only person who's successfully not only gotten her PC folders back. That's as part true. of that case. I forgot about that. That's yeah. right. She we should did. all request our PC folders back. No kidding. And I think after that, they burnt all our shit. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> After they made notes of what they thought they could use. They used Neuropsych, a bonfire. Neuropsych is asking, did I hear on Rabbit that this was leaked to the entire board of the Aftermath Foundation? Wow. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I think she's asking if it was leaked. I mean, it I, was, think, I don't know. I mean, I'm not well, on the board. Know. I know people think I'm on the board. I'm not on any boards. Um, yeah. On the <laughs> Aftermath Foundation that there was, I mean, just what I recall from Rabbit's video is she said that about 25 people knew that it was leaked last fall by Jane Doe herself. So I cannot say with any 100% certainty who that who that means there. Um, um, it It being in their possession and them knowing about it for that long wouldn't shock me. Yeah. Wouldn't shock me that they knew um, that this shenanigan had gone on. It's very probable that that happened. 
Um, I would have to ask Jane Doe herself. I don't know. I didn't check in with her and be like, Hey, what's up with this? You know? Um, that's right. Hey, do Hey, DOA. Yeah. Thank you for the super Hi, DOA. Chat. Don't forget Josiah got charged because of Patrick Perry on the same day as Aaron. Right. That's right. He was, they yeah. picked him up later on yeah. claiming that he was make, making threatening claims and, and like getting the dog worked up or something. And, and look, let's look at the difference between the treatment. Josiah, not white. Aaron, white. How long was Josiah in jail, guys? Like a week, two weeks? Aaron, in, in, in and out. Yeah. So, you know, again, our legal system is fushnicted in many ways across the board. But in particular, you know, they decided to take advantage of this young man, um, unfortunately, to hold him much longer. And, you know, uh, it, it's awful. I mean, and yeah. DOA, you know, did his time in the clink there as well. And I thank you for tuning in. I mean, right. I watch your stuff every day. So, yeah. you know, and uh, you and I have both said the same thing about the protesting and the protesters. I just want to give them a shout out here yeah. uh, and thank them for what they're doing every single day. Mm -hmm. um, and, and 90 plus percent of these guys that are out there on a daily are not ex Scientologists. Yeah. They are just peeps who were like, this is wrong. We're going to, we're going to stay here. We're going to keep talking about it until this shit's over. And yeah. I am, have you ever in our lifetimes, Nat, have we ever seen this happen? Mm -mm. No, not, not with no. this level. The closest I think that we've come, we've come is when anonymous was protesting and that was the yes. closest, but it was still very, it was still very different. And there's something so it impactful. wasn't every day. Yeah. It wasn't every day. This is every day. And yeah. this is, there's no masks. It's like, go ahead. And it, it, the, the, where Scientology could sink their teeth into doxing and exposing you. Now they're up against a bunch of personalities, YouTubers, people on TikTok saying, go ahead. <laughs> great. It's great send, for my views. Well, that's because back, YouTube. let's think about when anonymous happened. Was that like 2008? Yes. Okay. So in 2008, there was no such thing as an influencer. There was yeah. no such thing as like, you know, a YouTuber yeah. like there is now, right? People were just like, YouTube was like a, a fake VCR in the sky where you could upload, you know, America's funniest home videos type shit. Yeah. And people would laugh at it, right? Because it was a longer format than Vine, for those of us who are old and remember Vine and, uh, you know, TikTok's predecessor and, and things like that. Like Twitter was just coming out and Facebook was really taking off. Um, you know, just because we could all think, but you couldn't even share videos on Facebook. You could only post pictures. That's right. right. So the, the phenomenon of hunting someone down and inserting yourself into their very real, real life in 2008, totally different than right now where people are like, I'm going to cook this food for you now. Here's me in my kitchen and here's this. And everyone is like, just showing their lives to the rest of the world. And it's like, oh, you want to comment? Okay, good luck. It's like every time I get a troll comment now, I'm like, thank you for boosting the algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Virus, okay. thank you so much for that. He says, I totally agree with Nora. Rinder must go. I, I agree with that too. I agree that he needs to step down. So Tim here feels, I, yeah. I love Natalie's positive attitude, but when it comes to Mike Rinder, it's naive. I agree with Nora's mentoring candidate position. <laughs> and I totally respect that. I just, before I, I, I don't know as much. I, I haven't seen a lot of the things that Nora has and I'm more of a, I'm like a literal person too. So I kind of need to see it yeah. and know more about it before I would go. Yeah. I think that that was his intention. But you yeah. know, Nora, you know I 100% respect where you're coming from because- Oh, no, I know that. Not, this is not a disagreement, guys. No, not at all. This is And this is the beauty of it. Nora can be like, yeah, mentoring candidate. And I can be like, yeah, I don't know. I think self-preservation, but I'm not convinced he knew at the time. Yeah, I just, I mean, it, either- Either could be true. And the thing about yeah. the thing about this whole thing is, is that I get then then I'm going to get a, a ton of comments of like, what's your problem? Mike has done all this good stuff. Why are you attacking Mike all the time? Here's here's the deal. I am not attacking Mike. I'm just stating things that are going on. Like if I wanted to attack Mike, you guys have seen my writing. It would be a different scenario. OK, this is just me just saying, here's what happened. Here's these things. It kind of adds up to this. 
to me. Yeah. Yeah. So if I wanted to attack someone, which is a very visceral, that's a, that's a very mean word, you know, yeah. attake. Uh, I would say this like is not this, it. the Stephanie Hutchinson blog article would fall under probably the closest thing to an actual attack. Thank you. <laughs> that thing, I'm sorry. Stephanie Hutchinson, here's the deal, honey. First of all, you can't sit with us. Second of all, that you can't even sit with the other never ends because you're just redonka doodles. Like what is, what was going on in that brain pan? A, where you thought, I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write a whole book that's not based on any facts that I don't even know Scientology. I'm just going to talk about it in a run-on paragraph for a hundred pages with no references cited. That's not a book. That's a, that's a frantic essay. Okay. And that's and a then, book that she wrote that you're referring to. Some people might not know. So Stephanie wrote a little the, booklet. The Scientology about- for never ends. It's on Amazon. It is yeah. guys, you can't, I'd, I'd like to I mean, see I a, haven't, uh, I haven't written a book. I mean, it's not that I'm jealous that she wrote a book. It's just like, yeah. Why? Why why are you that's so Chris Shelton? I'm sorry. That's just like I'd 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 like to know, like tell us in the chat and tell us in the comments if you're catching this on the replay. Are you do you feel represented by Stephanie Hutchinson? Yeah. If you are familiar with what happened, you tell us, those of you never in Scientology. Um, does she represent you? <laughs> Somebody says <laughs> we don't we don't claim that chick. <laughs> Gem Star says. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, here's the deal. Like, I just go like, I have tremendous in this whole, like never in X S O X public. Yeah. This is exactly how Scientology would rank people. Mm-hmm. You get your little pin to show how much money you've given. You get your stripes and your fake, you know, uh, space Navy uniform. Mm-hmm. You get all these, it's all statuses. Right. And, and after being out for, you know, two decades now, I can see that it's just like, uh, you know, like we're all human beings. We're having a human experience on this yeah. very weird spaceship called Earth that is hurtling itself through space, guys, constantly. We're in constant motion going it throughout our galaxy, right? We're all here together on Earth, humans. Some of us have a little wilder experiences sometimes, like Nat and I were born into a cult. Okay, not our choice, just happened. And we we worked through that. Now we're out, we're talking about this kind of wild uh, experience that we had that one time at a cult camp. And now it's 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 a phenomenon where it's like, well, I'm a this and I'm a that, and this never in thing, like, yeah, yeah you were never in Scientology. Okay, well, I, I'm happy for you. <laughs> Congrats! Yeah, I never. I I I love it. We talk a lot about how just it's. I know that I've benefited so much from that point of view of people never in Scientology. Yeah. If it weren't for my friends in in real life and here on YouTube, never in Scientology, pointing out sometimes doing doing. I I even fourteen years out of Scientology. Yeah, thirty years out of the Sea Org. I yeah. still need to hear on occasion, you know, you know, that's not normal, right? I mean, you, you thank know. you. And your husband <laughs> says that to you, right? Cause he's a never end. Tony. Yes. Now Tony yeah. and I are not married, but we've been together for, we're going on 11 years. Okay. Well in most places that's common law marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Most places yeah, that's totally. your guys. are. Yeah, He's never been in Scientology and right, my wife neither. And that's <laughs> so refreshing because she keeps me grounded. She'll be like, you know, that's not a real word, right? That's a Scientology thing. Yeah. Isn't it? And I'm like, that's not oh, a real shit. thing. That's not a real thing. <laughs> Bel- Bel- Belgarath, thank you for the super chat, says, if Nora wanted to attack, I'm sure we would know <laughs> it. She's an ex-Scientologist for Pete's sake. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I think it's all, you know, um, I think it's a part of us, especially as ex-Serig members, I'm speaking for me, but you can tell me if this rings true with you or not, that there is like a a dark side to that where because of the way we were treated, the the impingement, I always think of that uh, definition in the admin dictionary. The word impingement in Scientology, guys, means to like, you're breaking through the person's yeah. like reactive mind to get to the get to the Thetan, get to the spirit. So you have to be loud, you have to be direct. And in the admin dictionary, there's a, a drawing of two little guys. And one guy is like up in the air, like <laughs> pounding on his desk. And the other guy's in his chair, like, Whoa! And that's the def like the literal definition of impingement is to 
freak somebody the fuck out so hard that they are terrified to not do what you say. Yeah. And so that's how we were taught to get people to do things and also how we were talked to when we had to do things it was just like boom like you would never talk to your children that way or your grandkids like if you're like uh you know the the meme that i can think of that's the closest but it's not even as intense is that one that everybody's done a film of of like i here's this pot it's hot on the bottom and then the teen is like trying to grab it's hot on the bottom and then the teen is like and she's like it's hot on the bottom you know like but the the last point where she's screaming that's how we were talked to constantly daily even if it was just like a mild request like hey yeah. could you go get the mail it's like go get the mail yeah. you know and you're like <laughs> Wow. Like there's shit. all that okay. intention behind it. I'll get even a, always, a lot. I'll, always. I'll be around people like even even with my Tony okay. early on. It'd be like him or even like his his boys would think that he was yelling, and I'd be like, nobody's yelling. Like we're we're like this is not yelling. Or think that people would think that I was so upset, and I'm like, I'm actually not upset at all. How did? <laughs> Thank you. And my kids will say to me constantly, why are you yelling? I'm like, honey, I haven't even gotten to yelling yet. If this is yeah. yelling, yeah. if this is normal yelling, trust, we it are is. not at the yelling. I have not turned on the Sea Org volume. No, like, we haven't. We haven't. It is another level. Mm -hmm. Anna sent you a super sticker. Oh, thank you, Anna. I'm going to grab a few of these two. And... But I have to tune myself to normal. Do you yeah. know what I mean? To regular. Oh, because yeah. because I get that sometimes we'll just be like just venting about something and people are like, wow, you're really pissed. And I was like, actually, no, I'm just explaining it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just talking. I'm just talking. <laughs> Trailblazer Laura sent you a super chat and says the cult of Mike Rinderology is real. 100% with you, Nora. Now use that same analogy to decipher. Oh, wait, did we do this? We one? did that one. Aaron in LA. But we thank you that. again. We did that one. Dina's a new member on your channel. Hey, thank you, Dina. And Astrid, thank you for becoming a new member on my channel. Hip, hip, hooray. Same with Lori Driscoll. Thank you so much. Relentless Viking. Thank you for that. It's Stephanie Mark H. Oh, Mark. Mark Headley. They keep, people keep saying that when they look at the pictures of Stephanie, they keep seeing Headley in a wig. And I'm like, Somebody, no, she's an actual, she's a regular she's lady. She's a real person. People have she's met She's a real her. person. She's been in the in the ex-Scientology community for many moons, writing, talking, just kind of hanging out in the fringes of, of ex-Scientology world for a long time, guys. At one time, she and I were like friends on the internet. We haven't been for a long time because I thought that her rantings were a little wackadoodle. So just I a little, uh, just a little discontinued that great gig in the sky sent you a super chat and says Stephanie finds self-esteem in carrying Rinder's water for him. Well, she's the new Catherine Olson on the I'm, board. I mean, but cat, but they didn't even put Catherine Olson on the board guys. And that's who's a girl Kath, who's Catherine Olson. So Catherine you know Olson is somebody the foundation helped. And okay. then she's been employed by the foundation and she's been single-handedly going through chats and trolling them and doing all this stuff. Now, here's an ex-Scientologist. Why isn't Catherine Olson on the board? Why did we put Stephanie Hutchison on there? Probably because they did need to have, they and they do, they need to have people never in Scientology on there. But it really seems like it's backfiring. Well, maybe her days on the board aren't very long. Uh, Le yeah. <laughs> Lena sent you a super chat. And says, so real life scenario, I'm a total tyrant boss, quite big, quite big or goes to another, not change in his way, quite naive to believe tyrant suddenly becomes an angel. Well, I don't think anybody believes that he became an angel at any time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think, I don't think, uh, yeah, I mean, but I do think because there's a very large camp out there that is like Mike Rinder changed his ways and he's helped people. Now, am I going to say that none of the people who did the show or went to the Aftermath Foundation were helped? Absolutely not, because that's not true. Um, but asterisk, um, have there been people out there who Mike hasn't helped, who he's continued his behavior towards, even ex-victims who he supposedly helped earlier? Yes. Her name is Miriam. There are others. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And so 
there there's too much evidence of uh, you know Mike doing one thing with one hand and doing the same old shit with the other. Yeah. And that's the real problem is that there's no reformation, there's no real change because you can do good things and continue to do the bad things. <laughs> Both can be true. Yes, he did some good stuff, but he's still doing the same old shit that he was doing before that is so harmful. And that's the problem. Yeah. The that problem is isn't problem. that he hasn't done enough good yeah, or some other that's... shit. It's like, I'm not the one that's going to say Mike Rinder has atoned for all of his things. His victims will have to let him know, thank you. You and I are done now. And there's a lot of them. It's not just like one person, guys. Yeah. That's you know. Right. Iron Rabbit, thank you so much for that. Says the Stephanie person seems to be a cult of Scientology, Mike Rinder fangirl, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. It's just, you know, in, in this case, for me, he's too close to it. He's too close to the fire on this one. Yeah. The fact that he's recommending this particular lawyer, why? I don't know. He met him. He liked him. The guy was like, oh, I'm willing to take people on pro bono. Fantastic. Yeah. And outside of this, has he done good works? Yes. Are those things going to be called into question now because of his unethical behavior? Yeah. Who's responsible for that? Him. Yeah. He's that's, responsible that's for that. True. That's true. Belgarath sent you a super chat. Said, had to put a super chat for Nora too. Nora's my favorite ex Scientologist <laughs> on YouTube. Natalie is a close Thank second. Thank you so much. I will take second, especially to Nora. <laughs> I'll take second to Nat. That's good. I'm, I I'm mean, putting it on my LinkedIn resume. <laughs> Nora. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's just, um, you know, I really hope that this new lawyer for Jane Doe and hopefully possibly the other litigants um, is able to get that meeting with the DOJ again, yeah. is able to get this before the authorities that need to hear this evidence. Because regardless of this scandal, okay, of this total distraction to what the case is actually about, let's be honest. Does yeah. this lawyer need to have accountability for his actions and possible, you know, professional legal repercussions? Yes, because he's a lawyer and he has to, uh, uh, you know, be accountable for that. But this yeah. case with the Jane Doe's is so pinnacally important to get that to move forward despite this hurdle. Yeah, that's actually the focus. And if we see more shenanigans coming out of Mr. Rinder's mouth to try and destroy this Jane Doe, then that'll just prove everybody's point. Mm -hmm. Because yep. if he doxes her and says her name and goes after her, because he knows her and so do I, then I, I don't know how you come to any other conclusion. So yeah. my advice to my yeah. friend is SCFU. <laughs> like, and zip it. Don't zip don't it. fuck this up. <laughs> zip it. Zip it. So zip Paris, it. Yeah, like the bachelor, the golden bachelorette. Zip it. Yeah. <laughs> zip it. Paris <laughs> says, uh, how does this man work to represent kids who were sex trafficked and victimized? And this is, I think, are you talking about she, I think she's talking about the lawyer on the board, Brian Kent. It could be either of them. But yeah, yeah I don't I, mean, I don't really. understand that. Um, I find it distressing, but I said it yesterday. Um, in Rabbit's Life, people who are corrupt put themselves in positions of power so that they can monitor everything because it gives them access to more victims. It gives them access to all of the communications and everything else so that they can craft the narrative and move people around and do things. Um, it's unfortunate. It's yeah. unfortunate now because now every other member of that board is going to be looked at with suspicion. Oh, yeah. In fact, someone said in the comments, and I don't know, all I first I've heard of this was just in the comment, was that one of the lawyers also on the board was Serge's former lawyer. Someone said that in the comments. I don't know if that's for sure or not, but I'm sure we'll hear about that and find out. 
You get Shelton criticizing the never ends, but if it wasn't for Streets LA protesting at the beginning, the test center would still be open. 100%. Correct. Correct. Um, Because he went there and got, like, let's be honest, because Streets went there and they Scientologyed him, and then he continued to go, Scientology became a trending topic on TikTok, on YouTube, yeah. everywhere else. Also, I mean, we, I put hashtag Scientology in all my videos. I get a lot of, I get a decent amount of views. I'm very proud of that. I'm proud yes. of how I've built, like, since I came back last year, I had 3,500 subscribers. Now I have almost 14,000 subscribers. I am super thankful and proud of that. Yes. Um, now, streets and all the other TikTokers combined have millions with an M of, of subscribers and followers across multiple platforms that in and of itself, the impact, the butterfly effect of that is unbelievable because this is how things are done in today's world. People on the internet see all of these things and they're like, this is crazy. They do something that they can from that place. Some people have gotten up to their local orgs and gone and protested. Some people donate money. Some people share the videos and donate money. All these things, all these things create an impact, right? And the people standing there every day, Streets, Jessica, both Chris's, Danny, Leah, Hollywood, Aja, all of these guys, DOA, you know, all these people, and I'm leaving so many people out, I apologize. Um, it, 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 you know, it particularly in LA is enormous because you guys have to understand that that is like the heartbeat of Scientology right there in LA, that they have effectively shut down. There are two huge places where Scientology exists. That's Los Angeles in those areas and Florida. Those are the two biggest uh, turnouts of Scientologists anywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. Everywhere else, it's just a tiny amount of Scientologists in those areas that are still hanging on to their belief in Elron. Like, I got some wins in the 70s, you know, and they're just hanging on for dear life. Most of those people are like now our parents' age. You know what I mean? They're not, they're in their 70s, guys. Mm-hmm. Okay. They don't have a lot of money to give. The money is coming from the very few bajillionaires, Nancy Cartwright, these other guys, Grant Cardone, who's a yeah. fake billionaire, but he still gives a lot of money because he's running a pyramid scheme and he just funnels it into Scientology for a tax he's donation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he has his own cold 100%. Yeah. Yeah. He has his own thing. 10X, you know, and all this stuff. But um, it, it, there, there aren't that many left. Yeah. And what shocked me when I was reading that Time Magazine article the other day, and I still, I honestly, guys, I didn't finish reading it. I had to put it away again because it still like reverberates in me how much yeah. that terrorized me um, when I was in high school. But the fact that in 1991, they said there was only 50,000 members worldwide. 1991, Nat, you and I were both in the Sea Org then. Mm-hmm. Well, you were in the Sea Org, I was in high school. Yeah, I was in, in the Sea Org. Now, in 1991, how many Scientologists did you believe there were worldwide? I, I believed that there were at least over a million. I was never sure millions, but we kept hearing it all the time. And mm-hmm. back then, when you went to L. Ron Hubbard Way, it was a bustling it was packed. place. It was, there were always Sea Org members it going was back bustling. and forth. We were running into each other. You had public. When I was there as a, as a public member of Scientology post Sea Org, I'd be sitting outside having a snack in between, you know, auditing. Mm-hmm. There were tons of people coming and going. I've never seen it like the. That was still when you could people. park on that street before it was L. Ron Hubbard Way. That's right. When it was Berendo, and people would park on the street, right? And so that street would be packed with cars. The parking lot was packed with cars. It was it was like bustling. The course rooms were full. So people were going. People were waiting for sessions because there weren't enough auditors. Yeah. There, it was just boom, but boom, but boom, but boom. Scientology was like bopping. I mean, when I first went to CC as a public, uh, just out of high school, I was told you got to go do these courses. You got to do them at Celebrity Center. I was like, all right, whatever. I'll do a Celebrity Center, and it was like packed. I mean, I was doing a, a Division Six course. I was doing the ethics, you know, course, right? So I could become an ethics officer, and um, it was packed in there. I mean, it was like yeah. you know, you got to get some elbow room at those tables, you know. And now it's like, it's ghost town everywhere. It's a, it's an absolute ghost town. 
it's like, where did all the people go? Well, yeah, they left. Do, okay, so do you think, I quiet. know that so many have left, but yeah. you don't think they're just using the underground, do you? Like the, isn't there like a tunnel connecting the advanced organization of Los oh, Angeles? Oh, well, they're using those tunnels, but there's also less Sea Org members. Let's just be honest. There's yeah. less Sea Org members. I mean, that, that big blue building with the Scientology sign guys used to be filled with people that lived there. Yes. That was packed. I mean, you, you were lucky to get a dorm that didn't have 10 people in it at a time because there were so many Sea Org members living there. And now um, there's, there's not that many. I mean, when I was on the RPF, that one room, when you guys see them protesting and there's like the, that little ca outdoor cafe, that's new, by the way, that little outdoor cafe area, there's yeah. a window to the left of that. If you're staring at it, that's on the bottom floor. That is one of the rooms that the RPF was housed in. At that time we had 32, 36 women in one dorm room there, triple bunks. Yeah you know, packed in there, no AC, no nothing. Um, it's just like insane. It's just absolutely insane. And now I'm sure that's, that's not like that. I'm sure that they're trying to, you know, give people one bed and just put very, you know, they could spread everybody out and give everybody practically their own room Yeah. at this point. Yep. They could. Because that's how so few people open. there are. Did you see the video Confident Chris did where you could see into the room and you could see a bunk bed? I'm like, is that a two bunk bed? I'm like, it's just like, wow, bunk. luxury. That's so nice. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. like, and I remember one of the protesters was saying, yeah, and they're in there like, you know, six to eight to a room in the Sea Org. I'm like, oh, that would have been awesome. That would have been, been great. Better. That would have been fucking great. I mean, and you guys have to understand these bunk beds are from like World War II. They have yes. hard metal springs that poke up into the shitty ass mattresses that have been used for 50 years. Okay. Yes. They don't replace Ugh. those mattresses. And you just, you get, sometimes you're lucky your parents will send you some sheets or some shit. I knew one girl who had a mattress topper. We're like, oh, that is like a feather bed. There's like a specific FO flag order where it says, uh, cause she was on the RPF with us. Right. So she came down with like her mattress topper and there's a whole thing about you have to ha be experiencing a level of uncomfort on the yeah. RPF, no feather yeah. beds, no, none of this stuff. So she was made to throw away this mattress topper. You would have thought they were shaped doing a Brittany to her hair. Like <gasps> it was, she was so mad about that. Because those things are expensive, first yeah. of all. But like, you know, she was being made to suffer. What did they uh what did they do with it? Do you know? Did they just take oh, it? Oh, they away? tossed it in the dumpster. What? They didn't even give it to somebody else? No, they tossed it in the dumpster. Whoa, what is up yeah. with that? Yeah. And somebody's saying about it being a hospital. Now, for those of you guys who don't know the history of the pack base, it was formerly the Cedars of Sinai. Um, hospital for many years from like world war one era uh, or two when it was built. Yeah. And so the, the building that's AOLA um, is like where they had done uh, a lot of like uh, cancer stuff. And then in the basement there, where is now the universe core where they deliver OT levels was the cobalt room where they did early radiation treatments for people. But the big blue building was like the main hospital. It was like just patients, patients, yeah. patients. And <laughs> ASHO was like a surgery ward, right? Mm -hmm. um, so my mom, when she was uh, pregnant with me in 1976, did her Lamaze class up there on the second floor of AOLA uh, because I, she was giving birth to me at Cedars. And then the day I was born, I was born at the brand new hospital that wasn't even fully opened yet over there yeah. in Beverly Hills. So, Yeah. It is. It's so crazy. It's it, it, the whole backstory and history of those buildings and what it became and what it is. It's just. Well, when they bought course, it, there were still bodies it. in the morgue. Yeah, I heard that. Downstairs. The downstairs tunnels that. is like the morgue area, guys. And there were still bodies down there when they bought them. Oh, my God. It is gosh. so haunted. It is so haunted. And just like when we did the renovations for what's now the Universe Core course room, we all got radiation sickness because the cobalt and stuff was just never. They never, they just took the machines out. They didn't like do anything to get rid of the radiation in there. Holy moly. The same thing with the big blue building. I mean, it's like you had patients in there that had the influenza in 1918 and stuff like that in there. And it's all terracotta. So every time we would go in and like break down the terracotta walls to put up new track and stud, we're getting exposed to terracotta dust that is filled with diseases with no PPE. 
with no nothing. We would all get sick. We'd all get these weird like rashes and stuff. I mean, it's it's insane. It's that insane. Is. And they're like, oh, well, you're just PTS. You know, go here, go eat some garlic it? toast and ISO and have some orange <laughs> juice and call us in a week. One of the many reasons, if you are not already subscribed to Oh No Nora's channel, because <laughs> she will bring it and she will spill the tea and tell you exactly like it is. I was thinking, Nora, as we wrap up here, we should, if everybody who's watching now, let's see if after, because we are about to wrap up here, go head over to Rika. Rika is live. She is protesting in Portland. Looks like she's still live. So you can see it there. And I have to say this chalk art, I, I, <laughs> I fucking love it. You, you, and whether these keep drawing on the sidewalks everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it great? I love it. I love it it's so fantastic. much. Fantastic. I did chalk art the other day with my grandkids because I was so inspired. Although we did it at my <laughs> sister's house, so there was nothing Scientology oriented. You didn't have there. to write the cult exit or anything on the sidewalk there at your sister's. No, I didn't have to write that. <laughs> I could have written probably ex cult members in front of our house, but that wouldn't have accomplished anything. Yeah. <laughs> the neighbors would be like, what? Oh, we got to have yeah, a barbecue. Exactly. What's up with that? <laughs> oh, it's a funny thought. It's a funny thought, but everybody, right. let me pull that back up again. Cause I accidentally X out of it. If there you get over, when we wrap up here, go over to uh, Rika. Rika is live. You can see it there. She is do another one here. At, isn't Rika, is she in Portland or is she in Phoenix? Yeah. No, Portland. she's in Portland. Portland, right? So it's, and it's a, it, as you can see, it's a sunny day for us here. I think it's a, a total of 48 degrees, guys. But in, 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 the, for us Oregonians, if the sun is out, sun's out, gun's out, we're going to be out there. That's why she's wearing a parka and a beanie. It's only 48. <laughs> sun's out, gun's out. I love that. Nancy, if you can share the link for, uh rika's channel i think i might be able to share it in the chat as well i'm not sure but nancy i know you got it there it is and if you guys want i did make those uh posters anybody can print those out they're in my community tab about you know uh what can't you have an opinion about in scientology so definitely ask people that if you're out and about print the poster put it up um it's really good questions um, these are, uh, the, in, in Natalie, you trained as an auditor, right? Only, only a solo auditor, a solo auditor. So, you know what a listing question is? Yes. yes. Okay. So that's a non-standard listing question. Uh, what can't you have an opinion about in Scientology? Yes, but it's a good one. This morning. It is a good one. It's really a good one. <laughs> it's a good one because it's a thinker for the person that you ask it to. And yeah. you know, uh, is the, is the point of the protest to get all of those people? <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Rika. Um, uh, you know, to leave partially, but of course it's to bring attention to the crimes and everything else. If we can also get all those people to walk out, guess what? All those places will close. All those places will close because if they don't have people, they can't keep those lights on. That and is true. Those buildings will go back to the cities from whence they came. That is so true. I want to just pull up a couple of your super chats and members for you. I oh, yeah. became a member. Thank you. Thank you, and Ivy. Maleficent. Maleficent. I love it. Maleficent, Thank you. Maleficent. And it looks like you got a super chat here. Oh, my goodness. Should we be wary no. of Leah Remini due to her association with... I, in my Kennedy? personal opinion, I, I don't think so. I would have to see evidence to the other, you know, to the contrary. Um, I I know Leah to be a good person um, and, you know, to be doing what she's doing for the right reasons. Yeah. Um, do I think that she should maybe figure some stuff out that's going on? Yes. I think she's being used and I don't think that's cool um, for people to use a celebrity, mm -hmm. but celebrities often, you know, have that happen as we're seeing with the Nickelodeon case, as we're seeing with P Diddy. Yeah. It's just all it seems to be out. the way of there's, the world. There's like a wrecking reckoning. I'm playing around with these things here. Yeah. There you are. There I am. I there hear. We, both are. <laughs> we have too many things to touch guys. It's too much fun. It's just the same thing. What, button. what happened? We need, now? we need like a, this is why Aaron set up a podcast studio guys. Cause he's just going to hire somebody to push the buttons 
and direct the podcast because we're just like, what's I'm going to click it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. We're going to wrap it up, but everybody head over to Rika shared a link to her channel in the chat. She is live in Portland doing her thing. Go say hi, go show her love, tell her yes. hi from Natalie and Nora. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody get over there. Nora, this has been amazing. I'm so glad we oh, got to do this again. And yes. we're going to do it again, of course, because there's no shortage of topics. We had a whole nother topic planned before all hell broke loose yesterday. So we will yes. have to get back to that. Love the SPTV logo there. But everybody go over there and check her out. Nora, you hold on for a sec while I just like get us out of here. So go check out Rika. She's, she is protesting in Portland. Everybody, please hit the like button on your way out. Make sure you subscribe to Oh No Nora and make sure you hit that subscribe button on my channel as well. Thank you so much for being here. I will be seeing you. <laughs> I love that. I will be seeing you in the morning for the Scientology News Recap at 8 a.m. Central Time. In the meantime, go check out Rika over in Portland protesting Scientology, the cult right there. You can see it. And everybody just get out there and have the most amazing cult-free day.